Kane Hope Felder, Ph.D., joins us. You're a professor at Howard University School of Divinity. Uh, and you wanted to say what about this issue? I wanted to say, first of all, it's important to recognize that the Bible is... Uh, represents a world before color prejudice. The Bible represents a world that has a very favorable attitude towards blacks. It's a multicultural world. Yes, it is. One of the great tragedies has been that in the last 400 years, Europeans and white Americans have created the whole ideology of white supremacy, and they have, in the process, taken the images, sacred images, as well as secular images of, that are victorious and positive, and made those uh, images white. Right. Uh, and, uh, and by the same token, they have recast black into a negative image. And I think that is a very important thing to keep in mind here. We are interested in corrective historiography, setting the record straight right. so that our people, African American people, will begin to sense, as I think was pointed out in a very wonderful yes. way earlier, yes. uh, have much uh, in history yes. that has been neglected. It is not a reach to suggest that the slave who worshipped on Sunday, the Messiah who was Jesus, who was white in all his uh, temporal uh, manifestations as offered to us by Michelangelo and other of the classical artists over the centuries yes. would be likely to bring the same kind of uh, obsequious deference to the slave master who was white as well so I think you are here to say among other things that inside there's nothing overt about this and it's an it's insidious but it's there is the notion that somehow white people are to be obeyed respected and looked up to by the slave. Particularly when the white slave master has a whip and a gun to the slave's head. Particularly when uh, this, this image uh, is presented in such a way that the black has no option. He, the black cannot believe anything else, cannot even suspect, cannot even express right. uh, 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 anything but the quiet inner pain of seeing the inconsistency between the whole teachings about a, a God of love and somehow the Bible is being used to keep them oppressed and feeling negative about themselves. And that is a tradition that we have received in America and the average white person needs to be instructed on these matters, not just young black kids. The average white person in America is as misinformed and, and miseducated as the average black person. And I think that this is a very substantial issue in all of the colleges and the universities of this country. Muhammad Ali called our attention a long time ago to the color of devil's food cake and angel food cake. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Is the caller there? Probably a good idea if I push the button. <laughs> Hello? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. You wanted to say. Yes. Uh, if Jesus is supposed to be black all of a sudden, why wasn't he portrayed as black 2,000 years ago? Why did they start him out as white and all of a sudden he's black? Uh, you got a lot of white reporters intervening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a, a, you know, I mean, I think these folks are suggesting that the image of Jesus was co-opted by the white establishment over the years. All the, all the artists were white. They were all liars then. They were, well, liars, I mean. Right, uh, then they well, all lied. May I just say, over one, black, over, to, to the caller, I yeah. want to say this to the caller. Over 100 references to, to Egypt are in the Bible. Over, over 50 references to biblical Ethiopia, which is present-day Sudan, are in the Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. Bible scholars, most of whom have been white, have translated and interpreted the Bible in a way that would be distinctly favorable to Europe and a way that would be distinctly unfavorable yeah. to Africans and people of color. Yeah. And this is an issue that we really have been suffering under for a long time. And we'll be okay, back. If that's 